Wealth doesn't just happen. You have to go after it and build it. And the chase can be packed with thrills, frustration, and adventure. Join hosts Chris Sevigny and Jamie Bateman on a journey into mortgage notes, a little-known but fascinating type of real estate investing that's full of human drama and perfect for growing your IRA or savings. We build wealth by working with distressed borrowers who are fighting to keep their homes. And that's why we call it Good Deeds Note Investing. We're doing good and making money. Join us. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Good Deeds Note Investing Podcast. I am your co-host, along with Jamie the Bully Bateman. Jamie, how are you today? I'm doing fine as long as you uh, stay in line. <laughs> I'm going to try and stay in line today on this episode, but we have a special guest today, somebody who we all probably know very well, who's come back out of the woodwork, and that happens to be Shante Duffy. Shante, how are you today? Fabulous as always. So uh, where, are you, uh, where are you at today, Shante? Uh, looks like you're in some office space or something. <laughs> I'm currently in my brand new office space that was recently purchased. So I have a new home now. Hmm. Where is that? Located in Hackettstown, New Jersey, because we all know I'm never leaving. <laughs> well, okay. you don't have to worry about me moving to New Jersey. I can say that much. <laughs> no, I just got two, two tickets there, so I'm not moving there. <laughs> I will only live in Commonwealths. So. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you're, 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 you have four options, Chris. <laughs> yes. And Kentucky ain't happening. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Massachusetts. You've been there, done that. Been there, done that. I could go back, you know, yeah, not for winter. So winters would have to be spent in another country, but we digress as always. I blame Jamie for this, but mm -hmm. we wanted to bring Shante on because Shante recently had a major announcement that Shante has started a loan servicing company and is excited to talk about that today. So Shante, why don't you tell us what you've had going on the last few months, uh, how things have been going and tell us a little bit about your, the new servicing company. All right. So past few months, been working very hard on starting up Fi-Fi Loan Servicing, LLC. It's been a lot of work, but fun work. Without a comma. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> it depends. It depends, yeah. It depends <laughs> who you're asking who you're reporting to. Just kind of been busy getting everything set up, um, something as simple as, you know, software is making sure everything's together so we can actually service loans, and then as detailed and extensive as licensing, which has definitely been super fun bought office space. So we have a location here in New Jersey, close to home. So definitely East Coast is where we're going to be. Yeah, just kind of working on building this together, making sure that we are keeping everyone in compliance, doing everything by the book, following laws, so we could be another servicer option for so all Shante, of So just curious, you said buy, file loan servicing. What, what does that stand for? It actually stands for buy investors for investors. So this servicing company was created for investors. Being in this space for as long as I have been, I definitely hear you know, the pros and cons of all different servicers where investors are happy, where they think servicers lack and kind of just compiled that all together and wanted to actually make it known that you've been hurt and trying to compile all that information and make a servicing company that reaches all of your needs and not some. So that's why Wi-Fi has been created. That sounds pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, you know, full disclosure, as probably people know, Jamie and I have invested in BiFi to assist Shante in getting this up and running. And, you know, there's a, of course a story behind that as well. But uh, as many people have known in the space, kind of, especially those that know me well, I kind of throw spaghetti at the wall a lot of times and see what sticks. And you know, Jamie, I was having a conversation with Jamie and I was probably venting about something with servicing or something that happened. And essentially it was like, I should just start my own servicing company, which by the way, I have said, I'm starting a origination company, a title company, a servicing company. <laughs> a, uh, so I've talked about a lot of things, but this yeah. did kind of come to fruition when, you know, Shante, you know, became a free agent yeah. uh, so forth. So it's uh, something that, you know, is very interesting for people in the sense, and I think it's you know beneficial because 
I know Shante, one of the things that I've been kind of, you know, trying to instill in you is, you know, there's certain things you do th things and you slap us around a lot for that, but we try and also put our perspective on things as a, as a lender on some of the things we'd like to see. And I think putting the best of both worlds together will be valuable. What do you think? I agree. I think that this is, we're kind of in the best position right now. You guys being investors, super grateful and appreciate both of you, by the way, have helped kind of open my eyes as to, you know, what the issues are that you guys are seeing as lenders, what makes it harder for you. You know, I always have stood by servicers are bad guys of this space, of this note industry. No one likes you, but you need us. And because of that, why not make it as pleasant and rewarding and make you guys as comfortable as you possibly can by keeping everything together in line, you know, meeting all your needs. And it's been a whirlwind of emotions and fun, but I do see this being very successful and just want to, you know, stick out and make sure that everyone knows that their voices are heard. There's things obviously within Rome that we can do, things we obviously can't do. Obviously we're going to stay legal. But here, this is for you guys, for you investors, you know, including myself as well. But this is for you guys to get everything you need in one spot, be confident, comfortable, and be able to relax so you can focus on investing and not necessarily managing your servicers. That's our job to manage your loans. So that's why we're here. Two questions I'm sure that's going to be asked frequently are, you know, when and where, you know, I'm sure is going to be things that come up, you know, you want to give people an update of, you know, what you're doing at BiFi right now, the status of, you know, taking on loans and where you're taking on loans. You want to give people an update from that and, you know, where you see it going as well, because from where it is today to where, you know, it's going to be in three, six and nine months is probably going to look drastically different. <laughs> Absolutely. So currently we're kind of in this testing phase, just making sure everything runs smoothly and, you know, our systems and softwares are working, but at the same time, we are actually taking down some licensing. So we are currently licensed in two states with a whole bunch pending, and that is Indiana and Missouri. I am not yet at this very moment taking on clients, again, just testing, but the goal is kind of October to be able to start opening the doors and by then have more licensing under our belt to be able to allow BiFi to even be an option for you guys. So, and we're in the States that you guys invest. So I'm hoping by October, we have a few more licenses under our belt. It's not stopping anytime soon. We understand, you know, that people invest all over the place. So we're just trying to take those down. Those, of course, take time that we can't control. But I'm hoping that by October, everyone can kind of start, you know, boarding loans with BiFi and, you know, going through their journey with us. That doesn't stop anybody now, though, from inquiring about questions, just some basic information and kind of putting things out there a little bit. So I don't want people to wait to October to say anything either, to ask anything. Um, I'm here. I'm ready to go. Again, just doing finalized testing. And, you know, that date might fluctuate a little bit, um, whether it's a little bit earlier or a little bit later. I'll keep you guys updated on that. But that's kind of where I'm shooting for at this point. It's interesting. So I know it's a, it's going to be a work in progress. Of course, it's not an overnight thing. It's not like one day magically bi is going to be licensed in 50 states and ready to take on, you know, 10,000 investors loans. But with that in mind, you mind uh, speaking to how, how do you think bi is going to approach things as far as separating itself from the competition, if you will? This is not meant to be a, an episode to bash other servicers or anything like that. But frankly, you know, if people have listened to Chris and me uh, in previous episodes, I mean, there, there definitely are frustrations with other servicers. Let's not, you know, beat around the bush about that. So I think, you know, communication has been a challenge a lot of times with servicers and lenders and then maybe tracking taxes and insurance, just throwing a few things out there. But how do you see BiFi kind of uh, separating itself from, from the rest? So my biggest point in this is that communication is number one. That is what I've heard across the board in all the years that I have been in this space, especially being in a servicer or being as a servicer. So I know how frustrating and I understand how frustrating it is to be missing communication or missing points. Um, you guys are our clients. You hire us to do a job. So there's really, in my opinion, no reason that communication is lacking. There needs to be transparency and honesty as well. Uh, I don't feel that any lender should ever be in the dark, whether you are super experienced or you're super green. 
our job is to kind of help. Our job is to help you guys. Our job is to actually do the legwork as a servicer and not have you guys running around and chasing things. We try to keep it as simple as possible so you guys can focus on your actual investment. And, you know, choosing an exit strategy, but the little things, as you mentioned, you know, tax tracking, dealing with escrow. I know that that's a very big deal, but it's also a very difficult process in general. And I think I figured out a way, I'm pretty confident that I figured out a way to, you know, master that and kind of avoid those bumps over there. Of course, you know, we do offer many of the same services that other servicers offer, whether it's, you know, just dealing with a performing loan or handling loss mitigation, whatever exit strategy you choose. We do have that ability. And obviously that's what you guys need. So we are here to work for you. With that being said, though, we do require you guys to kind of put in a little bit of light work. We can't be communicating with nobody. So it is your responsibility still to keep tabs on us and, or keep in touch with us. We can do the work, but again, they're your investments. So I can't decide and my team can't decide what to do with each loan you have. It's up to you. We're just here to make it happen and keep you in the loop and make this as painless as possible. And one of the things, you know, mentioned as well is, you know, you mentioned timing from October right now. I think Jamie is client number one, which uh, is having uh, loans actually, you know, basically boarded as we Mm -hmm. speak, uh, as well as a few of my loans to, you know, make sure our systems processes and everything functions. We're confident it is based on the the money you spent, Shante, on uh, software, <laughs> to say the least. But also, uh, you know, putting the team together that, you know, there's Shante, but, you know, you're really running this company and you're putting, you know, right now focused on putting team of CSRs and account receivable, account payable, compliance people and so forth together as well. You know, by doing all of this stuff, you know, throughout there, what has kind of been, you know, the most challenging for you is, uh, you know, I'm curious. The most challenging is it's different. It's new. I definitely kind of jumped into this with a huge learning curve. I'm used to the day to day running a servicing company and dealing with investors and, hey, this is all you need to get set up and get your loans ported. But there is a lot more. And there's, I've definitely had moments where I'm like, why am I doing this? Why did I decide to do this? just on the days that are stressful, but it's just because there's a lot to learn. This industry never sleeps. There's laws are always changing. Even now, as we've been setting up processes, it's, oh, something's going into effect in December. And I'm like, okay, we'll have to make sure we're on top of that. I'm in a different space from what I'm used to, where my comfort zone is, but you shouldn't always just stay comfortable. So I'm here shaking things up for myself and just kind of building the best team that I can between the staff that I have here and our vendors that we'll be using. Definitely spent a lot of time making sure we find the right ones to make sure that we can offer every possible service. But it's just hard to start up. That's the hardest part. You know, no one ever thinks, you know, about us. I never did. Just it's there. You don't realize what goes behind it. A lot of detail. So keeping that all together and organized has been the hardest because once you think of one thing, it leads you to 15,000 others. And you're like, wait, now I have 15 more problems that I need to have solutions for and just things as you go forward and you set this up, it's, if you're always thinking, okay, well, this affects this. And then it's this huge domino effect. But I also think it's a good spot for myself to be in to fully grasp and understand what is needed for just for us to run, let alone for us to be the best servicer out there for you guys. So Shante, if you don't mind, uh, I, we probably should have hit on this earlier, but, um, what is your background? I mean, I, I know a lot of people are familiar with you, but, uh, I think it's important for the <laughs> people. I'm like, if people don't know who Shante is. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, so. a lot of people do know who you are, but you know, we do have a lot of listeners who might pop in and listen to an episode. They don't even know what, what note investing is, you know? So, so who are you? So I have, I'm Shante Duffy. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I have been part of the note space as from the servicing aspect for a little over eight years now. I honestly had no clue that this industry existed. And that's me being so transparent. I genuinely was like, hey, I need a new job. And kind of started from a, the bottom at a company as like an admin assistant, just kind of worked my way up. Never did I think that this is where I'd be eight years later. Um, it genuinely was like, I have to get out of the house. Being a stay-at-home mom is not for me. Strong women out there who do that. But um, it just was, I was curious. I didn't ever know that this space existed. I thought the bare minimum when it came to mortgages is, hey, you pay it to your bank. And if not, you get foreclosed on like that's all I knew. I didn't know that there's a secondary space. I didn't know about the licensing requirements. I didn't know the responsibility of a servicer. 
So I've learned that over the past eight years, just kind of being on the front lines. And I realized I actually love it. I love meeting new investors. I love watching their success stories. I love also hearing about their failures. You know, it's not always a win. And it's cool because I'm, you need, you're needed. You're needed as a servicer. And it's pretty cool. So you get to hear a lot of different things, see a lot of different things, meet a lot of different people that kind of just open your eyes up to more, bigger, better, you know, want to start my own investing journey myself. So I just, again, I started from nothing and here I am running my own, which is exciting and exhilarating. And I'm pretty proud and I'm happy and I'm excited to see how far we get. I would like to mention, Jamie, that I have met Shante in person, unlike yourself. (laughs) (laughs) We have had broken bread together. So, Jamie, you are behind the wheel. (laughs) I have met met neither one of you in person. (laughs) So we're going to have to change that maybe in uh, late September. So Shante, you know, a few things pop in my head that I'll kind of spitfire a few questions because I recently put some loans on paper stack for sale. And, you know, the first question I get asked is, are they a licensed servicer? So, you know, BiFi, when they're operating in these states, you know, will, correct me if I'm wrong, will be licensed in the states. So that's Absolutely. something. Yes. Uh, so it's something and you know, that is a very painful process if people have never had to get that as a lender. I've been through it and stuff. And uh, that's why there was a joke earlier on about a comma because uh, there's a comma before the LLC in some documents and not on others. And the states picked up on that and reject them. So just kind of, you know, so many nuances. But Shante, uh, a lot of, you know, another question I'll ask is for people who are listening and like, oh, you know, okay, new service and so forth. We briefly touched upon trying to meet some people's demands. I know one thing that a lot of people ask about is, you know, I'll say managing like that foreclosure process and so forth, because a lot of lenders don't like to have to deal with that process and so forth. Can you talk a little bit about what BiFi, uh, how they plan on managing some of that, the loss mitigation, as well as the foreclosure process? Yeah, we are actually going to be doing all that work for you. That's the simplest way to put that out there. We work for your instruction. So if you want to work out some sort of payment plan with your borrower, we will do that for you. We hear your terms. We go the route that we have to based off of whatever exit strategy you want. We will do all the communication. We, I personally don't like when lenders do their own communication. So that is not an option here at Five Five. It's best that it's, you know, a single point of contact. Everything's clear, concise, documented, reported. We're all on the same page at that point, but we will handle any type of loss mitigation that you guys need. But when it comes to foreclosure, because I know that's always a tricky one for a lot of people, we'll coordinate that for you. We will either use your attorney of your choice. You have that right for somebody you know you're familiar with. That's by all means, we will use them. And if not, we will connect you with someone, but we will be doing all that communication. The biggest difference is you're included in all of that. So there won't be like a, hey, did you hear back from this attorney, Shante, or you know whatever the CSR is that's working that. It's, well, you're on those emails as well. Again, communication was a big thing. You can't be left in the dark, even when it comes to legal. So even if it's just us following up on making sure that they have all the documentation or expecting sale date information, things like that, you are included in all of that. So it does kind of open up that dialogue. So if you guys as lenders have any questions, you can ask those questions as well to both us, as well as the attorney handling that foreclosure case. So again, it was the more of the transparency, the direct communication, clear, concise, and let you guys also be a part of it. We don't want you to kind of take it off and go run either because that leaves us in the dark. And being a site servicer, we do have to stay within compliance and know this information. So the difference is, is that, yes, we will coordinate everything for you, but you are included in everything. I know a big thing also that I think is a good selling point is the cost. I always hear about the cost of servicing fees. Again, there's a cost to everything we do in life, um, including when you invest. It's not just the investment we put up. It's also getting that service. But I do think our costs are pretty comparable to the other servicers in the space, you know, people that you guys are used to seeing and working with, but it also makes sense. We're not trying to any like highway robbery tricks for this, but we do, I have heard the complaints, even from just you and uh, Jamie, about how it doesn't make sense that you being charged something when nothing's happening, you know, stuff like that, or it doesn't make sense just to keep things in compliance. I get it. So I'm very strategic in putting together our fee structure for you guys, as well as our servicing list and the options we're making available. 
not only from a fee perspective, but also one of the things that I think I value significantly is time. And you know, having the ability, you know, and when I you know invested in this, you know, one of the things I wanted to mention is taking some of this, the monotonous tasks away from a lender that I thought a servicer should be doing. And, you know, you know, for example, you know, we can talk about taxes and FPI and many other things, but having to chase down certain information or hiring a VA to do that, where, you know, it's, you know, you're already so engaged in the loan. You know, I think that is another, you know, I think selling point to buy fi will be, you know, allowing people to spend more time on, you know, the, the important stuff on their assets versus trying to, for example, hunt down a tax bill. You know, I'm just using that as an example. Jamie, what, what, what would your... Yeah, I mean, just to piggyback on that, I mean, I've, I've used personally four different servicing companies and they're, they're all very different. So, and I know, Chris, you've used several as well. So we do have a lot of experience, not only, you know, just managing our own loans, but also dealing with several different servicers. And I can speak for myself. I'm probably more hands-on than many other lenders. And, but I can tell you that's because I don't always have the utmost faith in, in, uh, you know, like you said, Shante, it's, they're, they're my loans. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm going to care about them as an investor more than anybody else will. Right. And that's just human nature. But if I can develop that level of trust that the servicer is competent and communicative, then I, I don't want to be doing what well, like Chris was just alluding to, tracking down tax bills or, you know, quote unquote, babysitting attorneys. That's not a slam on all attorneys, but I have much better things to do with my time than, than you know, deal with all that. I'd much rather have the servicer handle, handle that, but I can't do that at the expense of the, uh, uh, you know, the performance of my own portfolio or, you know, Chris and I have our fund and I have to trust that the uh, servicer is doing its job. So absolutely agree. I mean, in some ways you get what you pay for, but I think we're going to be using different different uh, outsourcing things and using technology in ways that we can keep the pricing competitive, but deliver on the promise of servicing these loans in a compliant and, you know, again, communication is key. So, and like you said, you know, like we've said, it's going to be a process, but I think we have a lot of balls uh, rolling that I'm quite optimistic myself that it's going to be a success. I mean, Chris, if you go back and listen to, I mean, I think you've talked about starting a servicing company since, you know, the be- with you and Gail, the beginning of the, the podcast, like oh, it's been, been a while. I mean, <laughs> yeah. and so, so <laughs> go ahead. One of the things, you know, I'll mention too, tee off of what you just said, Jamie, and, you know, I got to, you know, give Shante a lot of credit for this too, is the fact that some of this stuff, I mean, Shante, you've built some very good I'm trying, I'm losing the word just slipped my mind, but you've brought in a lot of specialists in certain areas, for example, third-party vendors who specialize in a lot of these monotonous tasks to bring them on board. And that's all they do for a living. So instead of having somebody, you know, instead of trying to wear the many hats or have your, the CSR wear many hats of doing things, you know, I'll give you credit because you've gone out and found a tax company that will handle all of that or insurance company to handle all of that. And some of these other areas as well to really focus on letting each person do their own job. And I think that's been a benefit to buy fi because just like an investor, you know, we want to do a certain job. We want the servicer to do a certain job. And then that, you know, you're managing several of those vendors, which as a lender in the past, I've actually done and managed because I couldn't find a servicer who would do all of them. And like Jamie said, I've used, I don't know, five or six servicers in the past. And, you know, right now I'm basically down to you know, prior to, you know, some of these that just got boarded by fi you know, down to two. And, you know, one of them, you know, has had some challenges recently with licensing and so forth and, you know, sig- find significantly in one state. So, it, you know, when you see that, it makes you nervous because all of a sudden you get an email that says, hey, oh, we're not boarding loans and we're not taking loans in and say anymore. I've got 40 loans that I needed to move all of a sudden. And, I wasn't around back in the day. I don't know. I don't think you were, Jamie, but I know Shante, you were when it was, I think, peak or what was that company that everyone had their loans at that just basically wrapped up. Shut down. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know what the reason was, but again, it's, you guys are given a short period of time. It happens. I've seen it happen several times. 
it happens and it puts you guys in a tough spot and just because i don't really actually have any reason for that but the point of a service you guys are investors again i always stress the investment side of these things that's what i mean investing is not your only job you guys do have full-time jobs and i think most investors actually do they do other things in their lives so the goal is to kind of make this as smooth as possible but making sure that you're getting everything you need so that no you're not up till midnight running through and buying your own servicing software what i think is asinine sometimes but allowing us and trusting us to do our job so that you guys can focus more on where you want to and at this point you just kind of dictate almost tell us what you need and we'll make it happen so shante um servicing software by the way <laughs> yeah <laughs> what <laughs> I like my servicing software. That I know you do, but not, it's expensive. I, I learned yeah. that for a Not everyone has the ability to do that or even wants to do that. Yeah. And not everybody has 300 loans or however many you have, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> so Shante, just quickly. So as far as the types of loans that like, if someone is a, a newer note investor or maybe they're experienced, but they want to board a few loans to, to test out BiFi when one BiFi is ready. Are you taking first, seconds, HELOCs? Like what, what type of loans oh, are? Senior liens, junior liens, lines of credits, adjustable rate mortgages, CFDs, land contracts, agreement for deeds, all those wonderful types of okay. loans. We just really know there isn't anything that we're not taking at this moment. And again, it doesn't matter if they're performing, non-performing, as long as they're in a state that we are licensed to service in, that's really all that matters. And then you guys have, you know, the a la carte menu to decide what you need and what you want. Um, of course, you can change those things at any given time. You know, hey, I, I didn't need escrow, but now I need escrow. Mm -hmm. Things like that. But we are taking those on. doesn't matter. There's no limit. You don't need to have 10, 15, 20 loans to start with us either. Everyone starts somewhere. I know the two of you did. I know I have to. So, I, you know, you guys started not knowing anything either. But look where you're at now. So, again, our job is to help you guys understand how to work your investments and actually do the work for you and have the trust and the confidence, you know, that you can sleep at night and not worrying if uh, your servicer has done their job or, you know, gotten you a payoff or a reinstatement or called your borrower, you know, that's our job. So mm -hmm. that's what we'll be doing for you guys. Well, and one of the things that I know you've also focused on too, Shante, has been, you know, I'll call it the cradle to grave service from, you know, basically starting it to servicing, but, you know, taking a loan actually even past the foreclosure process you know, you've worked with property preservation companies to reach agreements with them, REO management companies. So it's something that you've really, you know, worked hard at to focus on really providing that service. So somebody does not have to, you know, jump ship at a certain point in time. And I'll use an example for people out there. You know, if you had a loan that goes to foreclosure and you had it under forced place insurance with the servicer, you know, basically I know it's services I worked with in the past after it's foreclosed, it's like, Oh, well, the loan's been foreclosed. So now you lose your fourth place insurance. And that per I would have to go find someone else or go set up my own policy. Whereas, you know, again, give you credit, you worked out an arrangement with a company that's basically like, okay, yeah, just, you know, internally just get switched on their end from one type of policy to another. But for the investor, it's kind of, you know, they don't have to do anything, which you know, from an investment so standpoint, covered. yeah. So, you know, things along those lines. So that's something that I just, you know, again, mentioned, give you the credit for it, you know, thinking, you know, big picture like that, because again, it goes back to trying to let the investors, you know, focus on bidding on assets or, you know, their full-time jobs, their kids or whatever, uh, other things that they have going on in life. Yeah. I mean, uh, I was curious, like uh, in buy five, buy investors for investors. So I'm assuming you're open to investor input along the way. Of course. I, mean, <laughs> I actually am looking for it. I crave it. I don't know how to help you guys all the time. So if you're missing something, I need all investors to be comfortable enough to send an email and say, Hey, can we set up a meeting? I see that maybe you guys can do this better. I'm not saying it's a definite yes, that octane processes. I do need to hear the feedback. If there's something that's not working, you know, things do need to change. That's, you know, the good part about starting something brand new is that mm -hmm. we have this room, we have this space. And I definitely want to give you guys all the platform to be able to say like, I don't really like this, or this doesn't add any value to me. 
or this makes up whatever it is, pros and cons. We are, that's kind of what makes us a little bit more special too, because I'm willing to listen. We are brand new. So nothing is obviously set in stone, you know, as companies grow, as investors grow, things do change. Policies do change. If there's a vendor that I'm missing, hey, this should be beneficial or this is what's going on right now. I know the first time I saw like a CFD, I didn't know what that was. I had never heard of it. It was definitely something foreign, but you learn about it and you learn to work around it. Like, there's things that are different yeah. and you have to adapt. So being a servicer, you have to be open to change within the proper realm. Obviously, I'm not going to change something that doesn't also benefit all investors as a whole. It's not about me at that point. It's the fact that you guys need a servicer. So yeah, no, I think that makes advice is important to me. Makes Very a lot important. of sense. I know you've already taken in, input from other kind of experienced investors, not just Chris and myself, but not just you too. <laughs> <laughs> there are other investors out there. What? Um, <laughs> but uh, no, I think that's a key point really to hit on is, you know, we want to have everything perfect on day one, right? Obviously, but any small business, any company, whether it's large or small, is is a kind of a living, breathing organism. I mean, look at uh, Blockbuster. <laughs> they, <laughs> you know, you have to be able to you have to be able to pivot and uh, listen to your customers and and be aware of like market conditions. And you already alluded to laws changing and poli- you know things changing. On one hand, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But on the other hand, you got to be flexible and fluid and that's the whole the whole point. So that's that's refreshing to know that you're you're open to input uh, to a degree from investors. <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest. If it's just completely out of this world and makes no sense, mm. I'll tell you that. Yeah. But I'm I'm definitely willing to listen, and you know, I appreciate the other investors that I've kind of picked their brains about recently, just to hear from the people that I've known for years and trust. And you know, you guys aren't afraid to talk, and so I appreciate it. I need it. Well, here's one of the things I do want to mention because Jim, you brought the point of like investor input and so forth. And, you know, we've all had discussions, you know, with other investors as well. And there's been times where, you know, Shante is like, well, hell, why would we do that? And so forth. And, you know, from a servicing side, and then, you know, you, you would hear from us as lenders, you know, on one end and on the same token, you would say, well, we'll do it this way and be like, why would you do it that way? And there's, sure. you know, there's that fine line of, you know, from a servicing company, there's certain things you have to do to stay compliant and make sure everything's good, which, you know, you're following. And then there's certain things from a lender side, which to you might not make sense, but for us, it's actually really important. And I think that is the biggest difference that this, you know, BiFi is going to provide to others is the fact that, you know, you're fluid and flexible, like you mentioned, and things change because sometimes it's difficult to get companies, especially larger companies, to basically like, I'm not changing my ways for one person or even two people. It, you know, you need a mass of group of people, but there's a lot of investors who are smaller, who may own a few loans or, you know, 50 loans or 100 loans where there's certain things, they don't have that full-time staff. They're not a hedge fund or a private equity fund, you know, with 10 years experience that has, you know, basically got, you know, 20 people working for them that yes, they can do that in house. Many of us are just, you know, called mom and pop shops where, you know, there's certain things we would like to see. And that's kind of how we try to influence Shante as much as possible, (laughs) uh, you know, into this. I mean, I do hold my ground. You guys have definitely brought a lot of valid ideas, processes, thoughts. And how many times have I been like, that makes no sense. That is useless. <laughs> and then usually what I do is turn to Jamie, Jamie, would you use this? Um, <laughs> Trying to make this for you. Because again, it's, you know, if it, of course, the masses, just because, I mean, everyone has a method to their own madness, especially you, Chris. Um, <laughs> But it doesn't hurt. We don't need to. (laughs) It doesn't hurt to hear it. And the next thing is you guys might have ideas. Any investor would have an idea that, you know, I've met investors over the years before I even knew the two of you that have had ideas and things have changed just from their one idea in this space. So again, we have to be flexible. You know, it's for investors, by investors, for investors. So without your input, we wouldn't be here. Yeah, there's definitely been a lot of that back and forth, which I think really helps, you know, create a, a good product in the end and a good service. You know, there's there's definitely been on the flip side times where maybe Chris and I didn't quite understand why a servicer <laughs> does things a certain way. We're like, okay, all right, you know, you kind of put us back in our place as well. So I think there's 
been a, a good bit of that back and forth. I mean, obviously you're, you're running things, you're running the day to day, but we have had a good amount of input as well, but you've also kind of pushed back where it made sense to push back. So, you know, I think there's, that's a good thing in the end. Well, it's been a lot of strong-willed individuals who aren't afraid <laughs> to, you know, honestly speak their mind. And that mm-hmm. I think is very important. And, you know, it can't be one of those things where it's the, you know, yes, somebody to death. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. And you're, you're thinking this is the dumbest thing ever. Now, if we brought something up, Shante would say, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Um, and if Shante <laughs> said, and if I, I get said, heated, it's happened. Yeah, yeah. Shante would say that. And if I would say that Shante is like, well, you don't know what you're talking about. So let me do it my <laughs> way. Um, and that's fine. But I think it is important though, you know, from that perspective, because it's just, it makes things to hear both sides of that story because this business, there's two components to it. And a lot of lenders, you know, I've learned a ton just having conversations with you on the servicing side of things. And then I think you've also learned a lot from us just speaking openly because a lot of us sometimes are a little shy asking a servicer, well, why do you do it this way or that way? In the past, I typically, I mean, me personally, I haven't been, but sometimes I'm just a little much, I have too much of a fuse, unfortunately. But I think that has been something that's been instrumental in putting together, you know, this entity. Would you agree, Jamie? Oh, a hundred percent. I definitely think it's Yes, absolutely. And you know, Shanta, you're, she's, you're not afraid to, like I said, put us in our place. And, <laughs> nah, I try to do it with the utmost respect, but yeah. you're right. This is, and it's not, right. it's not only been the, you know, the three of us, like and, and we already alluded to other investors, but we've also been kind of, you've been consulting with attorneys and experts in different, you know, different vendors, like we've alluded to. So and there's been back and forth in that regard as well, I think between Wi-Fi and, you know, X vendor or Wi-Fi and X attorney or, you know, so I think again, work in progress, but I think there's been a lot of progress already. And I'm, I'm personally very excited for the, the future of Wi-Fi and, <laughs> you know, there's, there's a definite need. I mean, if <laughs> there's a definite need, if you just, it doesn't, it doesn't, you don't have to work real hard to get complaints from investors, from, from mortgage <laughs> note investors. <laughs> One of the other things, and Shante can talk a little bit more about this, but some of the vendors we've talked with, you know, they've never, we've had them create programs specifically for this. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that's, what's the crazy thing yeah. is, you know, and honestly, I've, you know, I've learned this from my wife and kind of, you know, mentioned this to Shante is if you don't ask, you're never going to find no. out. So Shante's reaching out to these people and said, this is what I want. Can you do this? And all mm-hmm. of a sudden people will be like, oh, and then I know, for example, with, you know, one of the vendors, basically they've kind of had, you know, been working with services in the past, but they've pretty much, you've been working with them, revamping their whole policy and procedure with this type of program. Correct. You're right. If you don't, if you don't ask, you'll never know. And as much as the thing is, you can't be afraid. And I think that for me, it was the biggest, like, all right, Shantae, like you're allowed to sit and say, this is what I need. The worst that's going to be said is no, I can't do that. And I can't be afraid of that. No, you can't. I mean, I've gone through several different vendors and had to say, well, this one doesn't work because we can't get this, this and that. But there's also other vendors who are like, no one's ever asked this of us. And I think we can actually do it. And then the cool part is we're on the front row of this. And like, okay, so how do you guys want it? And we kind of almost get to build it with them as we're building a servicing company at the same time. So it's kind of cool to know that I didn't think things would happen that way. But to know that people will work with you, you know, we have to be flexible, but they're just as flexible. Really don't think we've run into too many vendors that have been like flat out no. I think it's been us that's been flat out no. That like, hey, this isn't going to work for us. This is not what I need or it's not enough. Of course, if it's too much, it's going to scale down. But I think that's also been the fun part, especially meeting these vendors. I'm not sure why people don't use them a lot. Yes, it does take some time, but they're good. I'm confident in them. I'm confident in our plans with them. And it honestly makes, you know, running the day-to-day servicing a lot smoother and a lot more, you know, beneficial to investors without you guys even doing anything. At the end of the day, it's like behind the scenes here. So it doesn't actually affect you guys too much, but you also get a lot of cool perks out of it, which I think is the bonus side. So as much as things are happening behind the scenes, you guys do benefit from it outwardly when certain information is given back to you. So where do you see, and we've already touched on it some, but where do you see, what's the future look like for the company? I mean, 
you mentioned October potentially taking on investors loans, other, other lenders loans. Where do you see the company in a, in a year from now? I'm hoping we are licensed in the majority of the states where we are, you know, taking down and, you know, we're constantly going to be doing that. It just, again, this stuff takes time and it does have to make sense. And we're kind of just cherry picking with states right now that, you know, make the most sense to us and where we see the most traffic. But no, I'd like to be in majority of the states of uh, the U.S. by next year and by like a year from now, latest. So nice. I am trying to push for that, you know, and make sure that everything else goes smoothly. But I want to make sure that any investor who wants to try out Wi-Fi and wants to switch or, you know, just test us, that they can. And that they can, knowing that they have the ability to say, hey, I really like you guys and I'm going to afford more loans here. Or, hey, guys, I'm not a big fan. I wish you could change this differently and not be afraid to hold back and, you know, be honest. We're all adults. We can have a conversation. It's not going to hurt. You won't know until you try. So, so that's Sh- it. Shante, you mentioned, you know, October and so forth kind of leading into that though. In the meantime, you know, can people reach out to you if they're interested? Can they start getting documents and forms like, you know, every servicer you have to sign, you know, an agreement and a bunch of other forms. Could people, you know, get that set up in advance with you and so forth? I would actually prefer that you did. It doesn't cost you anything to sign paperwork. I think, you know, just other than your time, there's no fee to that, but I would love for people to reach out, whether they call or send an email. I'll definitely give you guys that information just to even inquire. It's not going to hurt. And it also kind of keeps you up front in my radar. And, you know, of course you can blast this information out on all different platforms and things like that, but it kind of helps us narrow down this list so that when a new license comes in, um, we can start, you know, opening that up. We start, you know, send you guys emails. So it's a little bit more personal. So, you know, okay, well, you know, she's licensed here now. So I can, I have loans here. I can transfer them. So I actually would prefer if you guys started calling and sending emails and just setting up some time to talk to me, whether you're brand new and I've never spoken to you, or if you're just an old friend, uh, it's great either way, but definitely reach out so I can get you some of that information. Um, just so you have it again, you don't have to send it back right away. There's no time limit on it, but just so that you have it so that at that point, we can at least get you set up. That's the hard part, right? The rest of it's just, you know, transfers, getting some data, but getting the basic stuff out of the way, again, it just sits until you throw something active anyway. Do you so, want to throw out your email address now or yes, phone number? Or um, I would tell people to call our lovely phone number, 888-217-7652. I'm extension 1001. And then you can email me directly at Shante at byfiLS.com or you can email servicing at byfiLS.com. And if people want to sign up for the newsletter for updates and other things along the way, they could also reach out to a newsletter at byfiLS.com as well. Correct, Shante? That works. So when we got if license in additional state, Shante can reach out to people and just kind of keep them in the loop on what's going on. So as we wrap up this episode, exciting episode, uh, Shante, we always ask for a note in Bolt, which is uh, you know, uh, a little tidbit or something. Now in the servicing space, I'm sure you've seen it all. So I'm sure there is one you know, word of wisdom you could give an investor as it relates to servicing uh, for something that they should be aware of or a lesson learned. I'm sure you could come up with a thousand, but all I ask is for one. I'm going to keep it general because I think it'll cover everything. Ask questions. Don't assume. That is probably my biggest pet peeve just from what I've seen. Just ask. It's not going to hurt you to ask. You don't know. Someone knows. Someone will find you the answer. Ask. Regardless of what it is, just ask. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good one. A lot of people are afraid either. Don't be scared. I don't know, it's a pride issue or something or what, what it is. But yeah, that's don't how you learn. <laughs> Ask, network, You'll, it'll get you very far. I promise. Look at where I'm at. So you know? Chris, before you wrap it up, I was just going to say, I am excited, you know, from a selfish standpoint, uh, hopefully the company does well, obviously, but it's also, I think that, you know, the three of us are very different and we all bring different strengths to the table. And so the last few months have been, uh, been exciting, challenging. And, uh, you know, I'm just excited for the future. I'm, I'm excited to watch, you know, Shante's growth and, and, uh, the growth of the business. So that's my two cents. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited. Uh, you know, I believe, 
you know, innovation comes at times of uncertainty or conflict uh, in many instances. And this aspect of the business is one where lenders seem to have a lot of conflict or issues. And, you know, when kind of, you know, approached, you know, Jamie about putting money together to throw this idea out there, uh, it was, you know, very interesting because of, you know, how do we go about it and so forth. And then, you know, also then, you know, be able to get Shante involved in this as well. And I'm excited too to, you know, again, go back to, it's going to be nice to be able to sit back and, you know, have my loans being serviced and have them all taken care of, you know, from, again, from t- cradle to grave, whereas where I'm at right now, many of them, you know, I'm basically having to manage on my own. And, you know, it's challenging. It's time consuming. When you have 300 loans with 50 of them in foreclosure, you know, chasing down attorneys and doing this other, all these other aspects takes a lot of that time. And then trying to also, you know, mail out documents to get them recorded or, you know, in many of those other aspects that make it even that much more stressful because it's been really challenging. And I'll just mention this in the last point to find a servicer, you know, all the services I've used are really good at certain things but there's always like one thing they don't do. And it's like, ugh, or it's, they do this, but not that, or this, but not that. And then it's like trying to find one that kind of covered all the bases. It was challenging. And this is where I think, you know, bi fi I know actually it will, because if it's not doing what I want, I'm just going to, you know, pick up the phone and call Shante and ask, like she says. So that's um, right. Ask questions. Yeah. And kind of just teeing on that with my note and bolt is mm-hmm. like Shante said, ask questions because if she doesn't know, then she'll probably be able to point you in the right direction on where to, where to get that information. So, and Shante, yeah. also one last thing, you gave your uh, email and phone number and so forth. Upcoming events. You're also going to be attending some upcoming events as well, where people could actually meet you in person. Correct. So yes, a few different ones. One's definitely set right now, but I know there's a few more going to the last quarter of the year uh, between October and November. So looking into those as well, but yeah, I'll be out live where you can talk to me face to face, shake my hand. You could ask more questions there too. So Jamie, final thoughts. I'll let you wrap up. This has been great. Shante, thank you very much for your time. You have anything else you want to add? I just want to thank you guys for allowing me to be on this lovely podcast. I'm actually a little upset that this is the first time I've ever been on it, but I will forgive you guys, but I'm glad that this first time was all about bye bye and I am super excited for our future. And yeah. Thank we you. The, this is our first paid guest, first person we've had to pay to be on the podcast, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> <That's true. laughs> it's time for everything. Just breaking records over here. Steven, sorry, you're not Steven. All oh, right. You, <sighs> that is true. <laughs> I wonder if he actually charged me for his time. time. I don't know. I'll have to Not check even. that. So maybe <laughs> so this might be actually the first. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks, Chris, Shante. This has been great. Like I said, I'm excited for the future of BiFi loan servicing and hopefully uh, people will take the, the opportunity to reach out to Shante and you know, go out and do some good deeds by boarding your loans with BiFi. Take care, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to the Good Deeds Note Investing Podcast. If you like what you just heard, feel free to share us with your friends and colleagues, as well as drop by iTunes and leave a rating or comment. You can visit our website at www.gooddeedsnoteinvesting.com to sign up for email updates for future shows and access all of our great content, including show transcripts, case studies, video tutorials, and more. Don't forget to join us next time for another episode on building your wealth and making a difference.